Good morning. Today is the 29th of January and it's time for yet another not particularly interesting, very vague and probably quite boring vlog. As some of you will already know, uh, we've had some trouble with some of our cars recently. I'm pleased to say that the Rover 45 V6 that I'm in today is uh, working again properly and I've covered over 500 miles in it since I picked it up from Summer Garage in Dudley just over a week ago. The news, however, on the Volvo C70, as many of you will know already, because this video is being recorded in advance of when many of you will see it, is uh, it's not so good. At this time, I'm not entirely sure what actually will be happening to it. This is a day in advance of when the video which has been passed around a lot of people already sort of in the background will be going live on the channel. I have had an offer for someone already just to take the car away on a trailer and uh, use it to keep other C70s going um, and uh, possibly we might take this gentleman up on his offer, he seems you know, straightforward enough but uh, yes I don't know and uh, I've been in discussion with quite a few other people recently. Not only have a lot of other people's vehicles broken unexpectedly um, in the last sort of month or so, but also there's something more to this than that, and that is, does a full service history and checking a car over carefully before you buy it actually eliminate you from problems? One of my friends, uh, the other day went to look at a V6 engine Ford Cougar, it's a 2001 I think, but they're very, they're very, very rare and uh, they are pretty interesting cars, they're sort of based loosely on the platform of the uh, Mondeo at the time and you just don't see them anymore, they weren't a big success for Fords, uh, they didn't sell very many of them and production ended after about four years, I think 98 to 2002. But he went to have a look at this car and he found out that despite having a virtually full service history um, and uh, you know, tons and tons and tons of receipts from Ford dealerships and all that sort of thing. The car was terminally rusty. Um, if it had been in the garage for a lot of the time, you think that would sort of maybe help out, but you had to walk away from it. Engine sounded great, um, bodywork was very good, but yeah, there was certain points underneath where it would not only be an MOT failure, it would be uneconomical to actually fix it. I also uh, have uh, heard from Dan from the Dan's Bangers channel, who also has a 45 V6, interestingly enough, that all his three old cars are broken. Uh, he's got an old Mercedes, that's broken. He has an old Jaguar, that's broken. And the 45 V6 is broken too. I think the 45 V6 is broken a little bit less severely than the other two. Um, but it sort of brought me to sort of think, well, why do we do this to ourselves? Why don't we just all go out and buy Toyota Igos and first generation Kia Seat and things like that? Which you know, probably in the long run will cost us a lot less money. Why don't we just do that? Why do we do this to ourselves? Ian Seabrook's been having problems for, with his Bolingo. His MOT was only passed his second attempt after quite a lot of fiddling and work. You know, he, and he's been doing a lot of that work himself to keep the cost down. Paul from Project Nigel has had problems with his, uh, with his truck that he uses and it's going to be a lot of money to get it through the MOT this year. So many people I know are just having <laughs> was like, well we did. We did as much as we could. Mr Coleman's owned 20 white block engine Volvos. He's worked on like of 50 of them. You know, he's, he's pretty much an expert on these things and you know, sometimes you just get caught out with old cars. He, a few years ago, he had an Amiga. You would have seen on my channel a 2.5 V6 box of Amiga, and uh, there was a problem with um, the sort of coupling at the back of the engine, and uh, you know that rendered the car actually beyond economical repair. He had to actually sell that to somebody else for some spare repair. He just couldn't. He just couldn't sort of justify doing it himself. We all get caught out, despite how experienced we are, despite how careful we've been despite how comprehensive the service histories of these things can be. I've always told people when uh, I'm sourcing cars, 
that I cannot guarantee the reliability of the car. It's, it's, it's not really it's not really possible. You, you, you can't guarantee the reliability of any car. When the Sanyong broke, uh, bear in mind it's 2020, it's in September 20, uh, uh, 2019, and we bought it in 2020. In April 2021, the um, clutch system that failed in Liverpool was totally out of the blue. The car was uh, about 18 months old and it covered 16,000 miles. Fortunately, that was eventually fixed under warranty, but you can get caught up by anything like that. It just is obviously a bit more common to be caught up like that on the older cars because they are old. They've got thousands and thousands of parts in them, and this, you, know, you can be as careful as you as, as you can. Some of these things just happen. I know a lot of you also will have had experiences like this, and uh, do feel free to share them in the comment section below. So you know, you said, you just just you want to be a bit philosophical and a bit realistic about these sort of things, and realise that if you want to keep one of these older cars, particularly the more sort of luxurious end of the market, you want to keep them on the road. But you're either going to have to spend, you know, more than they're worth doing it sometimes, or you're just going to have to accept that they will reach a time when they become beyond economical repair, and you might have to get another one because it's just not worth investing in the one that you have. Um, and we've had both instances of that, of that with the, the Rover around the Volvo. And so, you know, we, uh, we understand that. And I expect many of you will uh, relate to what, what I'm saying as well. So why do we do this to ourselves? Because we, we, we like these old cars. I mean, I, I'm driving this Rover now. It's just I had sort of almost £800 spent on it um, to keep it on the road. Obviously, the, the problem was most unexpected. I, I love driving this car. It, 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 it's wonderful. It's, it's fantastic. I, you know, I've covered a lot of miles in it over the last week or so and I think it's absolutely brilliant you know in some ways it's not you know but it, it, never, it never were particularly the most reliable cars ever all the, all the least reliable cars it's just it's it's sort of old but it's very characterful you know I like going to shows of it and people say well I've never seen one of those before uh, or you know I remember uh, I have a 45 you know my father used to have one or I used to have one and that's the sort of thing that you know keeps us going, doesn't it? It's the, the idea that you have something a bit different, something that you don't see. Throughout the travels that I that I had in this car, I, I barely see these days cars of this age or older just sort of going around. But there are some, but there are not very many. So maybe that's something to do with it. Just kind of you know in, enjoying an older car, a bit of nostalgia. And you know these cars are are quite inexpensive. They're not necessarily when you buy them going to be the most expensive thing. But um, in terms of running costs, that might be another thing entirely. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like my video, leave a comment below, and uh, we shall see you again soon for more hmm, inaccurate and rambling using. Lloyd Vehicle Consulting stickers, t-shirts and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below.